today we have got a very important uh, topic and i will show you few patients of this disease the disease is pterygium so that you should be able to see different uh, presentations we will start from a smaller pterygium and we will go towards more larger and advanced ones so pterygium P is silent in pterygium is one of the most common ocular conditions the word is derived from greek pterygos means wing shaped so this wing shaped pinkish fleshy subconjunctival growth occurs more frequently on the nasal limbus maybe because nasal limbus is more exposed to uv radiation sometimes it can be present temporal and other risk factors are dry hot sunny climate proximity to the equator outdoor occupation like laborers farmers etc now here i am showing you the second region now it is more broader in width than the previous one and more fleshy but there is no cap in front of the head so it is also less progressive now histologically pterygia is an accumulation of elastotic degeneration of subepithelial tissue the overlying epithelium is normal that's why it should be preserved i try to preserve overlying conjunctiva during its surgery now early diagnosis is key to prevention from further progression as it first appears on the conjunctiva it slowly grows towards limbus and then encroaches upon cornea and then visual access so if you notice it in its early stage avoidance of sunlight use of sun shades all the time will pre prevent its further progression and now you can see this uh, third uh, trigium uh, now look at it it is a thin less vascular uh, but if you observe it uh, closely there is a cap in front of the head so it is more progressive you can see that it has reached up to the pupillary axis so sometimes uh, trigium can uh, be ad advancing uh, and it can make you misdiagnose it as an atrophic region so avoidance of uv exposure is important to primary prevention diagnosis is clinical it can be diagnosed even in torch light or on slit lamp now what you can see on the slit lamp a triangular or wing shaped pinkish fleshy fibrovascular subconjunctival growth within palpebral fissure extending onto the corneal surface uh, causing with the rule astigmatism now thick more fleshy and vascular growth means that the pterygium is progressive there are three types progressive pterygium so progressive will be more fleshy will be more vascular and will be having cap in front of head whereas thin whitish lean with less vascularity means regressing to regium and no cap in front of the head so we have got progressive to regium we have got uh, regressing to regium and we have got uh, a chronic to regium if there is a pigmented epithelial iron line stalker's line adjacent to our regium it is evidence of chronicity Trigium is usually located at 3 and 9 o'clock and any other clockwise growth is highly unlikely to be trigium and you should then diagnose it as a pseudo -tregium. Now what are the symptoms caused by trigium? Well, it can cause watering, redness, cosmetic blemish, decrease of vision due to astigmatism and complete obstruction of vision by blocking the visual axis. Now here you can see that uh, whitish uh, line and here uh, we are showing you the astigmatism uh, that it causes with the rule astigmatism minus uh, at 180 or plus at 90. Now sometimes uh, uh, in exam asked about parts so pterygium has kept the most advanced transparent uh, semilunar infiltrate in front of the head followed by head then neck and body so pterygium like here you can see the advanced pterygium and you can clearly see the transparent semi-lunar infiltrate in front of the head 
that will show that whether the trisnem is advancing towards the pupillary axis or not so he there in this large progressive region we have got cap head neck and body and you can see how much vascular it is so it should be removed as much early as possible now another question asked is how to differentiate uh, tr uh, true pterygium from pseudo pterygium well bowman probe can be passed beneath a pseudo pterygium but it is impossible to pass it beneath a true pterygium now differential diagnosis now that's the pseudo pterygia due to chemical injury trauma penis uh, intracoma slk pingacula terians margil marginal degeneration and ocular surface squamous neoplasia can come in the differential diagnosis now here uh, I am showing you the last, the most advanced, the largest pterygium uh, obstructing the pupillary excess. Uh, now treatment could be medical and surgical, artificial tears, avoidance of UV light, sunshade, astigmatic uh, spectacles uh, and if inflamed mild steroids can be given in small atrophic pterygia. Whereas uh, in large uh, aggressive progressive pterygia surgical techniques bare sclera the most commonly performed easy technique but with highest recurrence as much as 80 percent so shouldn't be performed alone but you can apply intraoperative mitomycin c and with the use of mitomycin c its recurrence can be reduced to five to ten percent Another popular technique is excision with the limbal stem cell conjunctival autograft which has minimal recurrence as well. Some doctors don't cut it and instead detach it from the cornea and redirect it towards the inferior fornix. Now what complications you can encounter recurrence, corneal delen, corneal scarring, corneal melting, scleral melting especially with MMC use and squint if medial rectus cut. Thank you.